Groups are arguably the most important feature in Apple Motion. If you don't believe me, why are new projects always opened in Motion with a group already created? This tutorial will show you everything you need to know about groups and along the way you'll be creating your own personal and unique lower third title. My name's Bruce and if we've met before, welcome back. Otherwise, please like and subscribe and press the bell so you'll be notified about new tutorials. Open Motion and select a title. I'll set it for broadcast 50 frames per second. Motion opens with text already selected as well as a title background. I'm not going to use the background, so I'll delete that by selecting and pressing the delete key. Leave the text checked with the blue tick. Since this video is about groups, let's get straight into it. You'll see the text is in a group already, and for clarity I'm going to call that group text group. Naming groups other than untitled is really helpful, especially when you return to a motion project in the future. I always try to name groups, but it's a personal preference, especially if you've only got one or two groups. This project's got multiple groups, so naming in this case is imperative. I'll create a new group by right-clicking and selecting New Group. It'll be added to the top of the sidebar. There are now two independent groups, the text group and the new group that I'll call rectangle group. That's because I'm now going to draw a rectangle. Select the rectangle tool under the viewer and it'll turn blue to show that it's selected. And as an explanation, you can only have one tool selected at a time. So when you click on another tool, the previously selected tool will then be disabled. Draw a rectangle in the bottom of the viewer over the text. It hides the text. Now let's fill the rectangle with red. Select the HUD at the top right and change the fill to red. Select the text group and drag it above the rectangle group. Now you can see the text above the rectangle. This means that the order of the items in the sidebar represents the same order as you'll see them in the viewer. The next principle I want to explain about groups is that they can be independent, as they are here, or they can be nested inside each other. Untick the text group and you'll see that the text goes away. Click the text group again. Untick the rectangle group and the rectangle goes away, but the text is still visible. Both groups are clearly independent. Tick them both again. Now I'll drag the text group inside the rectangle group. Nothing changes in the viewer, but when I untick the rectangle group, both the text and the rectangle go away, even though the text group is still ticked. I'll undo that last move of Command plus C to recheck the rectangle group, and again Command plus C a second time to move the text group back to being independent again. And if you're following along, just make sure that the two groups are independent. I'm now going to select a shape to use as part of an animation. I'm going to use the neon rectangle from the shape category in the library. Select library, select shapes, and drag the neon rectangle inside the rectangle group in the sidebar above the rectangle. Drag it above the rectangle in the viewer. If I drag the neon rectangle below the red in the sidebar, the neon will be hidden. Drag it back in the sidebar so it's visible above the red rectangle again. Make sure the neon rectangle is selected. And then in the inspector select properties, select rotation and rotate 60 degrees. Drag the neon so it's centered in the red rectangle. Click crop in the inspector and you may need to select show to see the details. Drag the left until the neon touches the bottom of the red rectangle. Drag the right until the neon touches the top of the red rectangle. And you may need to move more than 200, which appears to be the limit, but you can always type a higher number. So let's try 220. Move up to share in the inspector and flatten the edges of the neon. About minus 30 should do it. The neon's too narrow. So to widen it, select Properties, Scale, and expose the Y value and increase it to about 300. I'm going to make two more copies of the neon. Right-click the neon in the sidebar 
and duplicate twice. Select the top neon copy of the sidebar, go to the inspector, select the properties tab and drag the X value in position to the right edge of the viewer. Do the same with the original neon and drag it to about halfway between the red rectangle and the right hand edge of the viewer. And do the same again with the middle copy of the neon and centre it between the two other neons. And you'll notice here that I've renamed the neons to represent their positions in the sidebar. I'm now going to put those three neons in their own group. Select the top neon and with the shift key down, select the bottom neon, right click, select group. Call the new group, neon group, and drag it to the top of the sidebar. And on a practical note, when reordering groups, always drag to the top of the sidebar. And this avoids mistakenly adding it inside another group. Now drag the text group back to the top to keep the ordering of the groups correct. I'm going to change the color of the middle neon. Select the middle neon in the sidebar. Select the shape tab in the inspector. Currently the outer edges are blue. Select the middle square, which is currently white. You'll see that the fill to the right of color changes to white. Click the fill color and the color wheel selector appears, select red. Now I'm going to animate that group of three neons. Select the neon group in the sidebar. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline. Select the properties tab in the inspector and click a keyframe at the far right of position. It'll turn orange. Now move the playhead in the timeline part way down the timeline. Set a new keyframe. In the inspector, click the X value in position and move the neon group well past the left edge of the red rectangle. Now I want to hide the neons before they pass over that red rectangle. I'll use a mask on all the objects and to do that I need everything inside a new group. Collapse the groups by clicking on the triangles so that only the groups are showing and the contents are hidden. This is important. Highlight just the groups. Right click, select group and call it everything group. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline and select a rectangle mask at the bottom of the viewer and draw over the right edge of the rectangle and all the neons. And now you'll see that it's hidden the left of the rectangle and it shows the neons. I want to hide those. So I'll invert the mask in the inspector under the mask tab. And it'd be good to have the text animated also. First drag the text down the timeline a little so it starts a little later. From the behaviors menu, select basic motion, fade in and out. Open the HUD. Increase the fade in and remove the fade out. Select the text again in the sidebar. And from the behaviors menu, select text highlighter, rubber band. Move the rubber band a bit further down the timeline so it shows a little later. And you can select any text behavior that you want. These are just my choices. I'm just about done, but before it's saved to be used in Final Cut, let's consider which of the objects that could be made modifiable so that they can be changed when you're using them in Final Cut. Text is always modifiable in Final Cut, so you don't need to worry about that, providing editable in FCP is ticked. For this video, I'm going to make the red rectangle modifiable. Select the rectangle in the sidebar. In the inspector, select the chevron to the right of fill color and publish. And you could also choose the colors for the neon bands to be modified, but for simplicity, have to avoid confusion here. I'll keep that for the next video because when setting multiple choices you need to be very careful about how you label those options. And make sure you subscribe to this video and select all when you press the bell to be notified about that follow-up video. And for now I'll show you the location of where you'd name those labels. Select project at the top of the sidebar. Currently there's only one choice published and that's the option to be able to change the red rectangle. 
It's currently just labeled fill color, which would be confusing when you're using Final Cut. What color are you going to fill? I'll rename that to background fill color. So it means more when you open Final Cut. Now all you need to do is save the title, give the template a name, set it in a category, or give it a new category. I'll put it in the favorites category. You choose your and publish. Back in Final Cut, look at the folder you just saved the title into. Drag it into the timeline. I'll play it here. And look in the inspector to see the option to change the background color. And to get a preview of the next tutorial, here's a view of what the multi-option changes would look like. It's no doubt that Apple Motion can do a lot, but you do need to know how to use it. I can help you make the most of your time and show you how to master Apple Motion. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and press the bell. And press the all button to be notified about the next tutorial that will discuss the multiple options.